Okay. Our subject tonight is the scientific method. And how it's gotten screwed up in <clears throat> the few years that I've been away from this stuff. And I don't know how this happened, but it's kind of unusual. But anyway, we know that in the scientific method you have a premise. It's either true or it's human emotional mental garbage. And it's almost, it usually means it's not true. But mostly it's not proven. And false is very difficult to prove, okay? False means that you'd have to have a million permutations or a billion permutations of the concept of testing the premise. Many approaches of falsehood, but you can never really get it there, especially when you're dealing with abstract logic, <clears throat> especially in um, electronics and uh, nuclear physics and things like that because they're hypothetical and you test them on things you can't see but they but you make them work but in the case of evolution somebody changed the rules somehow and they came up with this concept okay proving something true is very difficult to do in the physical world because an absolute truth is almost impossible to find anymore. Back in the old days when things were much, much simpler and absolute truth was easier to see, and I think we've uncovered all of those, okay? All the ones that we can perceive as being true anyway, as far as the human mind can perceive to true, true, okay? So the premise is either true or it's human emotional mental garbage so it could be not true, but not necessarily. That's a very questionable position. But it can easily be not proven. So you can kind of take out the concept of false, except for one thing, and the concept of not true to human emotional mental garbage and not proven on individual premises. Okay? So individual premises can be looked at this way, but they can't be looked at any other way. Are you with me? There is no false in individual premises. So let's look at individual premises. Genetic passage of genetic traits onto humans. Basically, I would say that that's true. Okay? There are some times when you get a mutation with 47 chromosomes where you get um, Down syndrome, okay? But that doesn't prove that any person mutates into a non-human. We've never seen a person, any humans mutate into non-humans. So mutation over here of this system is human emotional garbage. It's just not true. It's not, so therefore it's not proven. Because it can't be proven, okay? There's no physical evidence of this ever taking place, okay? They've had a few tales come out on people and stuff like that, but it's never been proven that genetic passages has anything to do with mutating into another creature, okay? So let's say that this is 3% of the system of evolution. This is 3% of the part of evolution that's true. Okay, so 3% so far is true. Now we go into small changes over time, okay? Well, that's easily shown to be true because as you go down from one generation to one generation, you can see it, small changes over time, but the species never changes into anything else, so there's no large changes. So it's, it's either true or not proven. Okay? So the true part is another, say, 3%. Okay, I say 3% of this system of belief. 
So we've got 6% is true so far. Okay? Microadaptation. That means that microadaptation means that microbes adapt to changes in the body so that the body can survive. Like you build up immunity because your immune system gets stronger. Things like that. Okay? This is true. But microadaptation has no proof whatsoever of evolution of man or animal ever changing species. This is part of the sideways logic, by the way. Sideways logic is never proven, can't be proven, but they imply things. They're implying that microadaptation means there's evolution of man from, a, from an ape somewhere. So it's human, emotional, and mental garbage, and it's not proven. Can't say it's false, because, you know, still some possibility out there in the, in the far reaches of the universe you might be able to find it's happening somewhere, but we've never seen it on the face of the Earth, okay? So as far as I'm concerned, it's false. So then, we got this thing about the human, the chimp, and the, the ERVs, the you know, human retrovirus and all that stuff, and you got the, the chromosome similarities and all that stuff, and because you can look at this in at least four different ways and conjecture about it, okay? that I know of, that means it's not true. It's human emotional garbage because it's not proven. Conjecture is never proof, okay? So, then they got this salamander in California that they see it looks similar to another salamander and their conjecture is that it made a big circle of salamanders in California and they want to evolve into the other and all that good stuff, but it's all conjecture because there's no real proof of it. It, it could have been, you know, some other, other salamander was there breeding with them that you never saw. There could be some unknown factor in there that this person is not looking at. So there's ways of conjecture that don't penetrate. There's only one way that it penetrates, and that is the belief in evolution, okay? If you believe in this evolution, then it penetrates it, and it's, and it, it has some possible conjecture. The same thing with this one. There's only one way that you can get into this and make it seem true, and that's with a belief in evolution. You have to have a belief in evolution to make that true in your brain, okay? Because otherwise, any time there's conjecture that can disprove it, because we're talking about something that can't be proven physically, it's only conjecture, okay? So, this creates a whole thought.